I just wanted to pass on some uh, quick information and answer a question that I get often. And that question is, uh, how come my tires on my e-bike lose air pressure when they don't have any punctures or anything? Now, I've been riding e-bikes for quite some time, and during that time I've talked with all kind of e-bike riders. And through it all, I, I found that most all riders do have many of the same annoying issues with their e-bikes. And as I said, the most common and annoying issue, which I'm sure you've had to deal with, is uh, having to get the tire pump out to deal with low tire pressure before starting a ride. How many times have you, have you gone out to, uh, to ride for an e-bike and, and you find out that you've got low tire pressure? If you've checked your tires for the umpteenth time and there's no punctures, worn or cracked tires, cracked or defective tubes, the stems all look good and the rims are clean and straight, etc., etc., but every time you let your e-bike, you know, set for a while, when you come back to the tires, they've lost air pressure. If you're anything like me, this is one of the most frustrating things out there, getting ready to go for a ride but having to pump up the tires before you leave. Well, believe it or not, there is a very simple answer for this issue. The question, why are my tires low? It's permeation. Now, permeation simply means to permeate or to pass through a material. E-bike tires and tubes are made of rubber, and even though they hold air, the rubber material is porous enough to absorb air and also, so over time, your e-bike tires will lose some air pressure through permeation. The bigger the tire, fat tires, which is a lot of the case with e-bikes, the more air that is absorbed. And if you're like me, and you use a CO2 canister instead of a regular pump, uh, you know, CO2 canister to pump up the tires, uh, the rate of permeation or diffusion is faster because CO2 acts as a kind of a solvent of butyl, slowly degrading its structure and leaking at a faster pace. So what can you do about permeation? Well, not a whole bunch. Uh, you can make sure to check your tire pressures uh, when you at the end of your ride just to make sure if you can ride the next day they're filled up. Uh, generally, there won't be a significant loss of pressure overnight, generally, unless you do have a puncture or something. However, if your e-bike sits for any length of time, depending on the weather too, you'll need to make sure to check the tire pressure and refill as needed. Now, of course, checking air pressure along with other general safety checking items of the entire e-bike is just a great habit to get into before any ride. Now, I prefer to ride with inner tubes installed rather than tubeless tires. I think it's easier to repair a flat on the trail due to an inner tube puncture than uh, a flat due to a tubeless tire. Now, that's my personal preference, so everybody probably will have a difference on that. The problem I have with slime and those kind of things is if you do have a puncture, it's, it's messy and it's hard to fix fix the tire. Now even with slime in that you will get some permeation. Not as much but you still will get some. So the bottom line is even with no punctures, good clean rims, solid valves, all that stuff etc etc you'll still get some air pressure loss. So basically give yourself a little time to check over your e-bike and take care of any maintenance issues before you start the ride. And for me, I generally give the bike a good check over uh, when I bring it into my storage area so that that'll just be ready to go. If you're curious as to what kind of tools and repair kit that I carry for on and off road repairs when I'm out there riding my e-bike, uh, check out this video right here. Mm -hmm. 